Hey everybody, Seven here with another test. This time I'm doing lock picking. Now I assumed that after the last test with salvage operations that this one would be significantly easier. With salvage operations, I was paying attention to the amount of plastic that was coming in, the number of springs, forged iron, scrap iron, steel, etc. I assumed that this test, since the only variable that I'm actually looking at is the number of lock picks used on each trial of the containers that I'm opening, that this one would be easier and faster. I was very wrong. As I was going about doing the testing, I started off exactly as I had with the salvage operations test, where I just opened up a world, opened up creative menu, spawned in a bunch of containers that were locked, and started to set about trying to pick them open. However, when I walked up to them and hit Y in them, they weren't showing me just locked, they were opening all together. I then went to hold Y, use the pick lock function, only to find that the pick lock function wasn't there. So after doing some research through the 7 Days to Die forums on Steam, I realized that the game was recognizing all of the containers that I had spawned in as if I had created them. Now even though the vast majority of the containers that I was using were not creatable by the player, the way that they were brought into the game had their ownership assigned to me. So every single container that was spawned was just openable automatically. After doing some more research, I realized the only way to actually get through this was to create a custom POI with all of these locked containers spawning in on their own. I had only opened the POI level editor once before in my entire life, and staring at that gaping empty void was intimidating to say the least. And thank God for Genosis, because a couple years ago, he started a series that was a very in-depth, hand-holding tutorial on how to use the POI editor. Because I had absolutely no idea how to even throw down dirt blocks or how to even make anything stick in there. So I spent several hours learning how to use the POI editor, following his videos and following his advice, and learning how not only to create a POI, but how to save it, how to tag it, how to actually bring it into a new world, and how to have it actually placed down properly. So this is the creation that I made. It's not exactly the uh, nag asylum that he made with his wife, but it got the job done for the testing purposes. So now that I have my custom POI and I actually have it laid down, Let's get some lockpicks, I'll do the legwork, and I'll get back to you with the results. Okay, now with all the legwork done and out of the way, let's go over to the results page and see if there's anything that we can decipher from what the numbers give us, and if there's any sort of discernible patterns or trends we can see with how many lockpicks we actually used with the various skills and on the various items and boxes we can open. We'll see you over there. Okay, here's the results tab. And for the most part, it did follow a moderately expected distribution with slowly decreasing usage of lockpicks throughout the trials as the skill level increased. There were a few notable exceptions though, where for the tier three chest, the iron chest, we went from 23 down to a crazy number of seven and then popped back up to 17. Uh, we had another instance like this with the wall safes dropping from 24 to six and then back up to 16. These ones I suspect are probably just statistical outliers as anybody who's played this game for more than a few minutes knows that the game is extremely RNG heavy and you can go up to a wall safe or an iron chest or really any of these containers and get it on the first try. So I think that the wall safe and the tier three are probably just outliers and that in a normal game, I wouldn't want to try to put any sort of weight or expectation on level two lock picking somehow being better than level three lock picking. The other thing that's jumped off the page to me immediately was that the ATM and the tier three safe are across the board very difficult to get into. Um, the tier three chest in almost every instance, aside from this weird statistical outlier, in every instance actually used more lock picks than the tier four and tier five chests. The other thing that kind of struck me was the ATM used a ton more lock picks. And again, I think this is a statistical outlier too. I wouldn't put too much weight on that, but overall the ATM used a significantly higher 
amount of lock picks to get success in opening it far more than any other container. One last thing that surprised me was the gun safe was so much easier than any other container to open up, which to be honest, I would have assumed that the wall safe would have been the bottom rung container and that that container would have then had the easiest time of accessing especially since the gun safe usually has better items within it than a wall safe would. The other thing I included was the hit points of the containers, because I'm looking at it as if the tier three chest and the ATM are so hard to get into with lock picks, but they only have 7,000 and 5,000 hit points, these items might be better off being beaten into with iron or steel uh, tools, or maybe with time charges. Whereas these 10,000 hit point uh, chests are actually not terrible to get into with the lock picks and that using that is probably the right tool for the job. Another thing to note is that while the gun safe is very easy to get into with lock picks at 5,000 hit points, the wall safe was actually giving me quite a bit of trouble throughout the testing and it's half the hit points. So I was thinking like maybe some of those houses that have a guaranteed wall safe or two and usually a guaranteed gun safe Maybe when I come across those, I'll be more apt to beat into the wall safe and use the lockpicks on the gun safe, especially in the early week one, week two, when lockpicks might be a little bit more scarce, also when food and stamina are an issue as well. So I don't know. Is there anything surprising about these results to you? Um, is there anything that's going to change the way you allocate points uh, by seeing this? I know that... Uh, there's some skills that are pretty beneficial just to have a single point into them. Salvage operations and lock picking are each one of them. Salvage operations, putting one point into it gets you access to making the wrench, which can then be an easier time of making a workbench. And lock picking, putting just a single point into it, allows you to create your own lock picks. However, with the advent of Alpha 20, you can get airdrops that have entire stacks of 50 lock picks in them off the bat. You can also get the lockpick helper from the traders that also contain 50 lockpicks. So I'm thinking that with Alpha 20, being able to create your own lockpicks might not be quite the necessity as it used to be in previous alphas. But I don't know. I'd love to hear if you had anything surprising or if you're going to change your playstyle at all about this. And I would definitely love to hear if there's any other skills that you want to see tested to see if they actually do what the description says or what they actually say on paper. Anyway, thanks for watching. This has been Seven. Bye.